Good evening, everyone. I want to call to order the Public Safety Committee meeting. And can we have a roll call, please? Commissioner Schreiber. Here. 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 Uh, both Commissioners De Placido and Bowman have been excused this evening. I'd like to make a motion to approve the minutes of December 2nd, 2015, Public Safety Committee meeting, and I so move. Second. The moved and seconded. Any corrections or additions from anyone? Hearing none, all those in favor? Aye. Aye. The minutes have been approved, and now I would like to call on Chief Kelly for the Police Department report. Madam Chairman, members of the committee, uh, first wanted to mention that uh, Rich Garrett from Second Lammers, as usual, was here again tonight. Um, he had to leave. He uh, went out for a fire, um, but wanted to let you know that he was here. And I regret that he's not here because I just want to give you a brief report on the lock zone. You'll remember that about a year ago, um, we came to the board and asked if they um, wanted us to attempt to start administering that through our police department. And if you recall, uh, I advised that the, the communities around us had decided not to do that through their police department because they have great uh, EMS protection and coverage through <laughs> second alarmers and the other great uh, um, EMS personnel, um, as we do. But we thought it might be a good idea. And you encouraged us to go ahead and do that. And uh, since that time period in the last year, we've had 14 administrations of naloxone and um, resulting in the person surviving. Um, the, those of us, uh, our department and the several others around the county that decided to go ahead and do that, it's been such a successful program that many of the other departments all around the county are starting to jump on board on that. And I just wanted to let you know that the decision that this board made encouraging us to do that uh, obviously was one that was a good one <coughs> and one that uh, has saved lives already is probably going to save a lot more lives in the future, and it's encouraging other communities to jump on board and do the same thing as well. So something you feel very good about. Uh, secondly, uh, um, after uh, all of the things going on in society, after uh, Ferguson, a number of programs have uh, come up, and one that's going on in our county is a youth police forum um, program. And it's a very interesting program where they bring in youth that um, in some cases may have been involved with the law or in, involved with school or uh, some level of disenchantment with um, the uh, establishment and brought, bring them together and they do a day-long session with um, police officers and they do a lot of role plays, a lot of interchange and exchange. And uh, the, one of the first ones in the county was yesterday. Uh, it took place down in Jenkintown, but... Um, had a lot of our police officers involved with it, with the youth. And it was very interesting. I got to observe part of it, and our, like I said, our officers were there for the whole day working with the kids. It was very fascinating to hear the officers' perspective afterwards because they said it was really amazing how they saw the movement of the, the, the young, young people over the day. That by lunchtime, the, 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 the cold had thawed, and it had, there was communication, and people were talking, and so on. And they really felt that it was a, a worthwhile thing, that the officers learned something from it, and they felt that the youth learned something from the officers and through the process. So it was kind of a neat thing that's going on, and I just wanted to make you um, aware of that. Uh, another incident that uh, some of you are keenly aware of uh, happened uh, over this last, uh, the, earlier this week. And that involves uh, a lost gun that uh, may have been lost in the Ardsley section of Abington. And um, when a person was out jogging um, and when they got home, they realized they didn't have the gun that they uh, apparently took, thought they took with them when they went jogging. And so possibly there was a lost gun out there. And uh, upper, the person ran in parts of Abington and parts of Upper Dublin. So um, both departments went out there and did some real thorough searching of the area. We used a canine to do a search. They even went out a second time with metal detectors attempting to find the gun uh, to no avail. And I mention this to you because, number one, some of you have heard about this incident and had some calls and requests. But secondly, because it would, became quite a big deal in, the, um, uh, in social media, and a lot of people were asking questions on what was going on with that. And so we got involved with the social media on that to get the information out there so that parents would know where the 
runner had, which streets they'd been on, so they could be especially wary for their children and advise their children uh, what to do if they should spot the gun and so on. The gun has still not been found, and um, but um, everything has been done possible to look for it and try to find it. Um, but I just want to make you aware of that one because you may have heard some things about it or may in the future hear some things about it. But it also pointed out to us very clearly the importance of us engaging, um, maybe kicking and screaming, but engaging more in uh, uh, getting involved in the social media because it's just such an important thing to be able to help out. Obviously, we, 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 we felt that if, if we were a parent of a child living on one of those streets where that gun might be laying around the street somewhere, we'd certainly want to know about that. And, um, and it brings us to the final point on this, which is uh, we, we've talked about Everbridge and Reddy Monco before here in the uh, public safety meetings here at the township. And again, this is a wonderful tool that, that we have and that we need to encourage people to sign up for because if they would like to be able to get that type of information about dangerous things or things that they might want to know about going on in their neighborhood, the way to do that is for them to sign up for Ready Monco. It's really easy. Just go on the computer and, and bring up Ready Monco, and it'll walk you right through it. Those of you who haven't done it, really, as commissioners, you would certainly, I think, would want to know about that and understand the process. It's very easy to do and um, a very excellent way of being able to um, be prepared to know what's going on and be able to advise others as, as well. Uh, and finally, um, I'm sure the last thing we have is a very brief, just several slide presentation on our statistics um, from last year, uh, 2015. They just are in, so I wanted to give you those very briefly, and uh, and that'll be the end of our police report. Hey, Chief. Yes. Where was the person carrying the gun? You sure? I don't know the answer to that. Okay. So, um, it was actually on Philly Voice that today they carried the whole article about what the Abington police had reported and it's been right. continually going and going and going and going. Fisher can't hear you. Oh, I was saying today on uh, phillyvoice.com they carried a whole article on the response of what the Abington Police Department had said and how they followed up on <laughs> many leads and ideas of how to teach your children the responsibility of when you find a gun, what to do with the gun, who to, you know, but if you followed the social media, it, it was kind of um, different. <laughs> I would say bizarre, um, the different comments and responses that, that, that this continued to grow as a monster, I would say, over you know, a long period of time. It's still going. I mean, you look on your probably Facebook, it's probably, there's a comment 11 minutes ago. If, before be you start the, the um, slide, yeah. about a person running with a gun, how they teaching the runner the, yeah. not to run with I mean, a gun instead of having to, you know. <laughs> I think you have some other questions, Chief. So. Not a problem. Well, sure. yeah, if you don't mind, Chief, before we get uh, of get off this topic, um, now obviously, you know, I, I, I know that the the department's uh, search with officers. Uh, metal detectors and canine units was exhaustive and I assume that the Upper Dublin Police Department also did an exhaustive search on, on their side. Given that that's an area where there's been over the years, you know, a lot of, there, there are, there's been a lot of stormwater remediation, there's been, there are a lot of uh, storm sewer inlets. Um, have we looked into the possibility, maybe asking George Wrigley or something, if in the event that the gun came off the person of the jogger and went into a storm sewer, um, that there's any way to to find it that it maybe end up somewhere or could be found with one of the cameras just to sort of know because I know everyone no one's going to be fully you know relaxed until they know exactly what the disposition of this firearm is. We've discussed a number of possibilities like that, Commissioner, and based <laughs> on the circumstances and the information that we have, some of which we can talk about now and some of which we can't because of the privacy issues of the course. person and so on. Um, we think that uh, everything that reasonably can be done and then probably another 50 percent has been done in this, in, in this case. We were concerned that with the melting of the snow, maybe that would help it out. Um, we've had additional people going out there since that's happened and uh, so I think we've covered it uh, pretty well. And then on top of that, letting people know about it, um, I think we're at pretty much as good a position as we can be in at this point, Commissioner. Thank you, Chief. I have another question. Um, this isn't about finding the gun, but 
Is there a program in elementary schools about what to do when you find <coughs> a, a gun? I mean, if that were to, I saw some a TV program. I think it was like 2020 or Prime Time or one of those where they had a program that they showed to that they had for children, and then they kind of tested them. So, like, they waited a couple a week later, and they had the children in um, doing like an arts and crafts project or something, and they just happen to like leave a gun on the table where this is, and the the teacher leaves the room, and they recorded for the parents to see what their children did. Do yeah. you, I don't know if you're familiar with that, so, but I don't know if there's some kind of. I remember that. Yeah. yeah. So I didn't know if there's some kind of elementary yeah. school yeah. level. Okay, hey, Commissioner, both um, both uh, lieutenants that are here. Um, we're former DARE uh, officers. Um, um, when do you want to address that issue? Come up here, the microphone address that. Commissioner, we have these big placards that we go into visitations, and it has a photo of a, a gun and two kids coming across a gun. So during our visitations in, within the DARE program, we do address that. Okay, um, and the school district did follow up on the letter that we put out, mm -hmm. notifying all the parents to reinforce that. Terrific. Thank you. Eddie the Eagle might be the uh, gun safety program you're talking about. But What's it called? Eddie the Eagle. Isn't that right? Wasn't he a, wasn't he a ski jumper? Uh, I, well, that's <laughs> and, and he was, a, uh, and he was a, a, a gun safety advocate, too. Thank you. I would just say w one thing real quick. I, I would commend you guys, the Abington Police Department, for keeping our residents informed of what was going on. Um, I, I thought that was a very good idea. You put out information, and it continued to keep a conversation going, whether it was bad or good, but the conversation did keep going. So that I think that was a great idea. Thank you. Commissioner Sapone. Commissioner, you, you, oh, you've, let me just say this. You, you've hit on the point, of course, yeah. that whenever you, you open up, uh, that it's sort of like opening up Pandora's box in right. a certain sense. The other issue is the time. Yep. You know, it is really time-consuming. And so that's, that's the balance we're trying to do as staff as far as to, to spend the time necessary to, to get out the right stuff and be able to answer the legitimate questions and so on. But it's just it's also a very time-consuming well, uh, thing, as you know. I just want to thank Lieutenant Malloy for keeping me informed throughout the course of the day and thank your officers for searching the entire neighborhood. I was out there. They were all over the place. Tell them job very well done. Thank you. Well, so are you, Commissioner, and um, it was obvious that you were very much on top of it as well, and it was great, the great participation from you and the people in the community and the cooperation was just amazing. It's really kind of a beautiful thing to see, and we thank you and your, the people of the ward that uh, did such a great job. Anybody else? Do you want to go on with your slideshow now? Sure. <laughs> okay. We'll be very brief. Um, just some quick uh, statistics. Um, obviously, we're always trying to figure out what you know. What, what are we doing? How well are we doing? And so on. And uh, I keep telling you that um, one of these years we're going to have it where we're going to see a big jump because it can't keep going down all the time. And. Um, um, this particular, obviously the thing we care about more than any other statistic is the issue of violent crime. I think all of our citizens think that. Um, last year, we in 2015, we had 42 uh, violent crimes um, it compared to uh, 14 where we had 60 uh, violent crimes. It was a reduction of 30 percent. And um, there's ex numbers for 2010, we had 96 violent crimes. And uh, 2,074, um, 2010 was the highest year for violent crime in modern history in Abington. Um, and uh, finally, you know, we talk about the good old days, talk about 20 years ago. You know, Abington isn't the same community that it is, uh, was 20 years ago. The answer, commissioners, is no, it's not. It's a much safer community than it was 20 years ago in the sense that the violent crime is almost, uh, cut, has been cut in half in that time period. And certainly we're not taking credit for um, all the crime going down. If we did that, then I'd have to come in front of you and take credit when it goes up, and I'm not ready to do that because we all know there's many factors that go into why crime goes up and crime goes down. Uh, many of them are out of our control and many of them out of all of our control, but, but we certainly pay attention to the numbers and the bottom line because that's, that's the results we're looking for and we keep working and trying to find better ways to get there. So that's some very good news. Um, that I knew that you'd want to know about, and especially the concept that um, over the years, uh, over 20 years, and seeing that um, the, the myth that is out there, 
that is more dangerous now than back in the good old days is just that. It's a myth. The statistics just don't, just don't hold that up as far as the amount of violence in our society as a whole or in, in Abington Township for that matter. Uh, part one crimes. Um, part one crimes, of course, are the major crimes in, in, that, that occur. Your, your robberies, burglaries, um, arsons, um, murders, um, and so on. And uh, to give you the numbers on that, 2015, last year, there are 975 um, down from 2014, uh, significantly down from 2010, um, even more significantly down from 2008, uh, as you can see, by, by about 41%. And uh, since 1995, again, going back 20 years, it's down by almost 50%. Uh, major crime uh, in the in the township. Hey, and Chief, can I yes. ask you a question? Sure, Commissioner. Out of that 975, the robberies, well, most of them were caught. Am I right? The perpetrators were caught. Well, this is this is all part one crime, not just robberies, but all part one crimes, Commissioner. So that includes. But burglars. most of them were caught, right? Well, there, a lot of them were caught. Um, I wouldn't say most of them are caught, <laughs> um, because what happens is you have the same person committing a number of crimes, and as they do that, then we catch them. But you might have 10 crimes for, for one person. And, um, and so, no, I, I wouldn't say that most of them are caught, but, but certainly a lot of them are. And if they continue, we find out when they've continued to come back. And we certainly are detectives and officers have had a, done a great job at, at being able to, um, able to arrest them. Um, you, most of you are probably aware of the, the robbery that occurred last week at the pet shop, uh, pet food store on the fairway and uh, armed robbery. By the way, um, you know, we often hear about these robberies occur and they using a toy gun or a fake gun or a pellet gun. Well, this was none of those things. This was a 40 caliber um, pistol, just like we carry. And, um, and he uh, tried to escape in the vehicle. Officer did a great job and saw him. And that's one crime trend, Commissioner, we won't have to hear any more about. But in this particular case, one crime and one arrest. But it doesn't always uh, happen quite, the, quite, that, quite that, that way. Yes, Commissioner. Uh, Chief, I know that you're, uh, you're between the, the slides of the part one crimes and the thefts. Um, in which of those categories, or maybe another category, do, does the very common crime we hear about um, somebody going through an unlock, something going up and down the block, opening every car door, and when they find the unlocked one, they go and rifle around and take what, anything remotely of value, if it's just change. Is that, would that be a, fall under part one or thefts or something else? It, it comes under thefts, Commissioner. Okay. It's thefts from vehicle and uh, it would be considered uh, under the bigger heading of thefts. Great. Okay. Thank you, Chief. Um, <laughs> and, and so those are, I'm sure. I just want to make sure that they're, they're reported crimes, ma'am. All of these are reported crimes. Pardon me. Okay, thanks. Okay. Um, all right. So that's part one crimes. And just to give you a quick breakdown on that, um, and, and here's a, the one you were mentioning, Commissioner. You'll see that out of that number, 975, 816 of them. Uh, came in the, in the category of all of the all of the thefts um, a, a, as a whole, and it gives you an example of um, from the previous year um, that it was down slightly from the previous year. Oh, so uh, thefts are a subcategory of part one crimes. Yes. Gotcha. Yep. Um, aggravated assaults, uh, obviously something that's really important, um, and th those were down significantly. Again, that's something that's very difficult to control, but it's just such an important one. We wanted to let you know about, about that and the, the um, direction that's gone just since last year. And of course, burglaries are something that we all care about. That's a really important one where they actually break into a home and uh, go in to steal things. It's something that is something we care about a great deal. And uh, last year there were 83 uh, compared to uh, 134 the previous year. So that got cut by more than, cut by more than a third. Just to give you an idea of what's going on, this is the last category, calls for service. Um, last year, we, uh, the officers handled 47,000 calls for service. Give you an idea, that's um, actually down a couple from uh, 2014. But as you can see, up considerably from previous years, 
2010 uh, and 2009, and um, that it, we only go back that far with this because the um, with the uh, change in the dispatching and so on, the numbers really don't compare. Um, but uh, going back as far as we can, when they compare, it gives you an idea that the number of calls for service continue to go up, as you'd expect, as society gets more and more complex and more and more issues going on. And um, that's all I had, Madam Chair. I just wanted to, uh, uh, we just got the uh, initial numbers in, and um, I know the board cares about what's going on and wants to know how things are going, and we just wanted to provide you the, the snapshot of um, the information from last year. Thank you, Chief. One last question. I'll stop, I promise. Commissioner um, Spiegelman has Chief, one last question. This is my one last question. I mean, these, obviously, these numbers are quite encouraging, to say, to say the least. Uh, this, is it, I don't know if you have this PowerPoint posted to the department website, but could it be made available to us to share with folks? Because I think people would be very interested to see these, uh, these stats. Yeah, absolutely, Commissioner. I'd be glad to do that. But again, I just want to just put out the caveat. We're not putting these numbers up to say, geez, look what good job we're doing. Because again, we all know that a lot of these things are outside of our control or outside of anybody in this room's control. Where That's not the point of what we're saying. But what, part of the point is, that there's a myth out there in our society that's becoming more and more dangerous or that our community is becoming more and more dangerous. Or, well, we're, we're kind of close to the city, so maybe we should move out further from the, the uh, area and it'll be safer for our community and safer for our kids because we value our kids and we want to protect our families. And that's just not substantiated by the numbers. The fact of the matter is because of the great work that is going on in our community with us, such active citizens and people so committed to the community and wanting to get involved and report things and so on, and then all of the programs that have grown over the years that involve the police and the community in a way that's very, very proactive and very productive, those numbers really indicate that the efforts that are being put in and that, that frankly that the board is doing is going, taking things in the right direction. And so it is something we can be proud of and talk about. Again, not because next year might not jump up a little bit or one thing or another. That's inevitable. There's always going to be, you know, some degree of fluctuation in those type of numbers. But the idea is you can see there's a clear trend, and the trend is that the crime has gone down, and the fact that is that, that, um, that at least it refutes the myth and the, the, the paranoia that is somewhat out there that there's crime rampant in our community because that's just not borne out by the facts. That's exactly the reason I wanted, that's what you said is precisely the reason I wanted to share this with folks. I also was planning on taking uh, credit for the drop in crime, but in the years when it does go up, I'm going to put that on Commissioner Klein, so we'll be fine. Thank you very much, Chief. Anybody have any other questions? We're getting applause for that, so that's great. Um, I, I didn't know if you wanted to mention, um, since you were just talking about the citizens, the um, upcoming Citizens Police Academy. It's, I believe it's in March. Certainly. Uh, Lieutenant Warner, why don't you talk about that since that comes out of your division? Good evening, everyone. Uh, yes, March 3rd, we're starting our Citizens Police Academy. We have about eight applications to attend. We would really like some more folks to come. Um, it's a great opportunity for us to explain to residents um, why we do what we do and how we do it. So we're anxious to get it going. I know, as you all know, Officer Roger Gillespie is the spearhead of that, and it's been great successes um, over the few, past few years. So we'd like some more volunteers. So push that out if you wouldn't mind in your newsletters. We'd appreciate it. Thanks how many? For, how many sessions are there? Uh, I think there's eight, eight total, eight weeks in a row. And the same day every week. That's right, Wednesday nights. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Is there a deadline to apply? No, we'll take you right away at the very last minute, Commissioner. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> no deadline. Could that be on the web? Could you film it and put that on the web? No. <laughs> film the session. Any other questions? All righty. We're going to start our regular agenda then. PS1 is a motion to adopt ordinance number 2108, chapter 156, vehicles and traffic, article 3, parking regulations, section 25, parking prohibited at all times, no parking between signs, no parking here to corner, parking prohibited except certain hours, 
no stopping or standing at the regularly scheduled meeting of the Board of Commissioners on February 11, 2016, at 7.30 p.m., and I so move. Second. It's been moved and seconded. Any questions? Commissioner Hacker. <coughs> thank you, Commissioner Schreiber. I want to thank Officer Freed. This has to do with the township-owned space, which is adjacent to the school bus depot on Huntington Road. And as you know, we had converted that space into potential uh, overflow parking. And the original signs that were put in went too far up to the street. And uh, some of the neighbors were com concerned about the lack of parking space. So Al went out, took a look at it. And this is going to reduce it to five feet on either side of the um, place of ingress and egress there. Thank you for that explanation. Any other comments or questions? Hearing none, all those in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion carries. PS2 is a motion to advertise ordinance number 2114, amending chapter 156, vehicles and traffic, article 3, parking regulations, section 9.2, no left turn, and section 11, turns at intersections for adoption at the regularly scheduled meeting of the Board of Commissioners on March 10th, 2016 at 7.30 p.m. And I so move. Second. It's been moved and seconded. Any discussion, questions from anybody? Hearing none, all those in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion carries. Thank you. We have one citizen, Mr. Curtis, signed up to speak at this meeting today. <coughs> okay. Name and address, please. Michael Curtis, Senior, 1137 Tyson Avenue. I want to thank Officer Freed and the other officers that watch our schools when the sign are flashing because sometimes I've gotten a real kick out of watching people zip down there and next thing you know they got the lights behind them. My question is, and I don't know if this would go to Officer Freed or to the board, the signs are overhead that flash. Is there any way that they can be brought down a little bit to where they're eye level with the drivers? Because there's a lot of times while I'm taking my grandchildren to school, people are on the phone, but they're kind of looking down. They're not looking up at seeing those flashing lights. And the second is, usually in the afternoon before Highland Elementary gets let out, I am sure it happens at other schools as well, when you go in to pick kids up there, there's a lot of folks that are parked on Kent Avenue blocking up the road. Is there anything that can be done about that? But Officer Freed, I want to thank you and your fellow officers for the fine job that you do. And thank you, Abington Police Department, for the job that you do. Thank you. Officer Freed, would you like to answer that? Sure, Madam Chairman. And uh, Mr. Curtis, thank you for your support there. Uh, as far as the flashing school zone lights go, those are permitted by PennDOT, and uh, they, they do the specifications in their warrant process for the permit on how those lights are to be installed. So uh, they have certain recommendations and, and rules they have to follow, so those lights probably wouldn't be able to be lowered at this point. Uh, as far as Keith Road and the parking, we are aware of that situation. We've been working not only with the school district, but our parking enforcement folks, and uh, we do monitor that from time to time. And I must say, uh, th this problem isn't just specifically at a Highland School. We have quite a few of these same type problems at most of the schools in, in the township. So uh, we try to bide our time at which school we get to on what day or what week. So uh, we, we are working together with a lot of folks on, on those problems. Any other comments from the audience? Public safety? Commissioners? Staff? Oh, Chief, Chief Kelly. Yeah, Madam Chair, I just um, wanted to answer a response on the issue about televising the program. It does, certainly deserves a explanation. And the program, because we go into a number of things related into the police department, actually everybody that get, is admitted into the program um, actually goes through a background check and so on because obviously we don't want to be giving out um, information uh, to uh, potential criminals and so on or that type of thing. So part of the reason it's interesting is because of some of the inside information and uh, so it, it's not something that I think would be uh, would translate well to a television. But uh, so there, there is a reason and I just want to make sure that um, I uh, answered that um, and gave that explanation. Okay. Thank you, Chief Kelly. Sure. Having no other comments, meeting is adjourned. All right. It is my pleasure.
to call to order the Abington Township Public Affairs <coughs> Committee meeting of February 3rd, 2016, the first meeting of 2016. And can we have a roll call, please? Mr. Spiegelman? Here. Spiegelman? Here. 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 Uh, Commissioner Bowman is excused. Uh, we're going to start with approval of the minutes. This is a motion to approve the minutes of the December 2nd, 2015 <coughs> Public Affairs Committee meeting, and I so move. Second. It's been moved and seconded. Any corrections and such? Hearing none, all those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? None opposed. Now, we welcome, as always, our Parks and Recreation Director, Doug Wendell, for his report. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. <coughs> I do have some good news. I was just notified last week by the uh, state senator's office that uh, Abington was among one of the group uh, among the group that was re going to be receiving the feasibility study grant award uh, from DCNR. So we're going to be getting a fifteen thousand dollar grant to do a feasibility study for the pools, which we are required to do if we're going to be asking for any money from DCNR for pool renovation, which we will have to be doing very soon. So. This is the first step, and uh, we haven't been officially notified by in writing, so we're waiting for that before we start proceeding with any of the RFPs or anything like that, but it looks good. All right. Thank you very much, Thank Director Wendell. Uh, Commissioner Klein has a question. Have you heard anything about the uh, Pico Green Energy grants? Uh, they, they've called me a couple times to update them on some items in the application, but I haven't heard anything from them. I was surprised to hear anything from DCNR with the state uh, budget not being ratified completely, so I'm um, assuming that that's part of the, the problem is that the state still doesn't have its budget. Okay. But no, as soon as I do, I'll let everybody know. Thank you. All right. Thank you, Director Wendell. You're welcome. Uh, all right. Uh, it's actually uh, sort of a, a great way to start the year, actually. We have uh, uh, two of our agenda items feature guests um, from groups of residents who really do a lot of great uh, volunteer work in our, uh, in our community, uh, the, uh, the uh, Environmental Advisory Council and the Human Relations uh, Commission. So it's really nice to have them here tonight. We're going to hear from both of them. So we're going to start with item PA1. This is recognition of former state representative Ellen Bard and Earthright. Um, so I'd like to call uh, Mr. Paul Macht, and uh, I guess we'll have the, the, our representatives from the EAC uh, come up and join him. Or, or one representative, whoever wants to. <laughs> well, while they're <clears throat> deciding who's going to come up, my name's Paul Macht. I'm a local environmental architect, and I worked with Ellen Bard for many years <clears throat> in a local environmental organization, nonprofit called Earthright. And Earthright, I was the former, uh, its last president. So we're no longer operating as a nonprofit. And we had a little bit of extra cash left in the bank account. So we want to uh, give that money to a sustainable fund, separate account, at the Environmental um, Advisory Council. And we want to do this in memory of Ellen Bard, who was, um, she passed in 2009. And, and she was, if any of you remember, New Ellen, environmental trailblazer uh, for her work on energy and the environment. And she served as uh, chair of the task force on a 21st century energy policy for Pennsylvania. Earthright helped the township's curbside recycling program and participated with the Abington Trails Advisory <laughs> Committee to provide <laughs> recreational paths. And I um, just want to dedicate this to Ellen's memory and all her work and her vision and want to see those funds used to continue her vision in whatever programs are deemed to meet that challenge. Uh, Ellen was a legislator of the year. She was a Republican who cared vehemently about the environment. And uh, she was legislator of the year by uh, many organizations, the Penn Futures, 
Pennsylvania Orthopedic Society, the Pennsylvania State <coughs> Tax Collectors Association. And is Peggy Myers here tonight? She is, good. Peggy was especially close uh, with Alan, I know. And uh, we're, we're gonna miss Alan, and we're happy that there can be a legacy here in Abington Township uh, for Ellen and to continue her vision in the environment. Thank you. I think that deserves a round of applause. Mr. Mock, thank you so much. I think this is a beautiful and very fitting tribute uh, to a true public servant that no one who's lived in this community for any length of time will ever forget. Uh, so thank you, thank you so much. Um, I'm, I'm not gonna, I won't call on Commissioner Myers unless you wanna say I, something. I, I feel that I need to say that um, Ellen was a real visionary for any of us that knew her. She was, she brought trails to Abingdon Township. We had never heard of trails. We thought she was crazy. And she didn't, she was she lived the environmental life. They heated their home with a wood burning stove. While we all talk about it, she was the second person in the township to own a Prius. <laughs> and she really lived it. And the incredible thing, the people never understood that she was Republican. <laughs> and being a real Back to, we used to call her the back to nature girl. Their vacations were at their home with no electricity, one in Alaska where she was from, and the other with no electricity but a windmill. That, that's how they generated their energy, um, and that was in Connecticut. So she just really lived it. And um, just personally, she was a mentor, and she really, Talk me about integrity. <laughs> Obviously, I really miss her. <laughs> and I can't thank you, Paul, enough for doing this. <laughs> thank you. Thank you very much, Commissioner Myers. I, that was a very, uh, was a very touching tribute to not only a, a, a wonderful and unique state representative, but also a, a very dear friend of yours. So thank yes. you very much. Ms. Jen Sherwood. And I'm Jennifer Sherwood, Environmental Advisory Council. I would like to say thank you to Paul Mox and Earthright, and mostly to Ellen Bard, whose legacy has affected Abington Township in the most wonderful ways. And I was involved in the Trails Committee a long time ago, and have gotten involved more and more in the environmental aspects of Abington Township. And so we look forward to continuing her legacy and helping Abington become a a nicer place to live. Thank you. Thank you very much, Jen. All right, moving on to PA2, um, the Human Relations Commission report. Uh, this is an, another item for information only. We're going to have a presentation by representatives of the Abington Township Human Relations Commission on their activity of the past year, and it is so great to have we have th uh, several wonderful representatives. Uh, we have uh, Shelley Rosenberg, Joanne Kleiner Levin. Did I, please tell me I got it right this year. Yes. <laughs> um, Meredith Gill and Tom. Does Tom have a last name? Is Tom, he's Tom Gill? Or is he just Tom? Tom the third. And he's the most, he is the most relaxed being in this whole room. I'm sorry. Jen, since you need to pet Tom, can you pet Tom? Now, I'm, when I go home, I'll to pet my baby. Very therapeutic. <laughs> Who's a dog? <laughs> <laughs> Well, totally relaxed. He is. Welcome, and please kindly introduce yourself. I'm Shelley Rosenberg. And I'm speaking tonight for the Human Relations Commission. I'm the secretary of the commission, and it's my pleasure to be here to speak to you all tonight. So I'm going to try to encapsulate in just a few minutes what we've been doing, uh, kind of bring you up to date. Our concentration has continued to be on outreach. We're striving to let people know that the Abington HRC exists, can be helpful to them in working with the public and their employees and volunteers. One of the primary organizations with which we've begun to work is the Abington YMCA. We made a presentation to the executive director a number of months ago in the spring and his executive staff. They then asked for a presentation workshop for the department heads, which we did. 
In addition, we've been working with the youth director to craft a program on diversity and inclusion for the Abington Achievers. That's the group of kids that are from fifth to eighth grade that meets twice a month. Um, we've spent quite a few times planning with them and then held the programs. Uh, it's, it was a two-night program, uh, f both nights with the youth, and then the second night uh, the parents attended also, or some of the parents attended, and we had a specific and special program on the HRC for these parents. The Achievers are now participating in a contest in which they've been asked to demonstrate through some form of art what they've learned and feel about diversity and inclusion. And we hope to display the best of their work at the Y and perhaps in some other venues, maybe the township building. Dave Rondinelli might be looking into seeing if there's an empty storefront in the Y, uh, I'm sorry, in the uh, mall that we could use so that the kids would really have a chance to shine and to show their work. Um, in the spring, these kids will participate in a trip to Harrisburg for a tour of the Capitol that will be hosted by State Senator Art Haywood. Uh, Senator Haywood wrote a letter supporting this program for the HRC's application for a grant from the uh, Jenkintown Rotary, and we received a grant for $250. This is the second grant that we've received from the Rotary, and we will then, of course, make a presentation to them in the spring. Um, we've also been asked to work with the Abington Police Department Explorers, and we've scheduled that program for March. Um, the HRC has also received an extremely generous grant from HUD. Some of that money will be used for the Y Achievers trip to Harrisburg, and other funds from that grant will be to upgrade our outreach material, brochures and other ways that we have for outreach. Um, we're also hosting Angela McIver, CEO of the Fair Housing Rights Center, at our meeting on February 9th. The HRC continues to be represented at the Tri-State HRC. Tri-State is Pennsylvania, New Jersey, and Delaware. A program on community policing is being planned for the spring, and Lieutenant Kelly Warner is being asked to be one of the speakers as a result of that representation. In addition, I was appointed to the Montgomery County Advisory Committee to the Pennsylvania HRC, um, and I'm participating in planning a program that will take place here in Abington in the spring. There will be four programs in various <coughs> communities around Montgomery County, and there will be one held here. Um, and also, as of this morning, Tri-State is, in addition, looking at another full-day program. We did a full-day program last November, a year and a half ago, and both Meredith and Joanne were speakers at that program, in addition to my helping to plan it. And as of this morning's meeting, we are looking to plan another full, probably full-day program um, in 2000, late 2016 or 2017. So Abington is out there being represented in the greater Philadelphia and tri-state community. Um, finally, for the third year in a row, uh, we participated in Abington Night Out and made contact with many more members of the public. We've also worked with the STAR Project that they're working on. <laughs> I was glad to we see still have one left. here. They're, okay, they haven't quite all left, but we've been working with the STAR Project and with the manager's office to update forms and the township employee handbook so that it better reflects the human relations ordinance. Um, we intend to continue our outreach to other groups in this community as we work to make life better for all residents and guests in Abington Township. Thank you. And there's questions. Thank, thank you so much. I know we're going to have some questions, but uh, I do want to thank you. That's, uh, that is a very impressive uh, outreach and connection with so many different facets of, uh, of township life. I know Commissioner Schreiber has a question. The uh, spring program you mentioned, is that open to the public? Uh, yeah, yeah. And do you know um, what that is yet? Uh, we, the, the one that, that uh, Lieutenant Warner, Kelly Warner is going to be part of, that's, on community, that's going to be on community policing. And better is that part of that four-part thing that you were saying? Oh no, or that's something different. Uh, no, I'm sorry. That's a that's a different one. The f the the one on community policing is by the tri-state human relations commission, which will be open to the public, and I'll figure out a way to let you all know. And the four-part thing uh, that's here in Abington is really directed toward the public. Mm -hmm. um, so we don't have a date yet, and there was somebody from the police department actually who took over trying to get the date. I was going to do it with Mr. Lefevre, but somebody from the police department sort of preempted me and was told that the dates weren't quite available yet. 
So as soon as we know that date, they're, um, we were trying to get them all in a week, and I believe it's the second week in May, but I don't have those notes with me. But as soon as I have it, we'll <coughs> open it. And that is, is that a training? or is No, that, that is really to introduce what does the Pennsylvania Human Relations Commission do, okay. what do the <laughs> locals do, and, what, and how, how do the locals differ from the Pennsylvania, and what does the advisory commission or committee do. There is a, an advisory committee that's Montgomery County Advisory Committee, which mm -hmm. is what I was just ele or elected to this past summer, uh, that meets monthly. And it's to tell people what that is. And so, so people will understand what these three entities are, how they function for the community, how they differ from each other. Thank you. Thank you. Any other uh, questions? Commissioner Klein. Uh, I mean, I just want to make a comment. It's great to see all the hard work you guys are putting into it. It's, it's wonderful to see a volunteer board especially taking what was such a controversial issue and making it into such a positive, a positive thing in the township. And I appreciate all the hard work everybody's been doing. Thank you. Absolutely. Any other questions? All right. Thank you very much, Shelley. And thank you really to all of our HRC. Um, the work you do is appreciated every day. Right. Moving on to the only actual thing we're going to be voting on tonight which is PA3, resolution number 16-009. This is a motion to adopt resolution 16-009, uh, authorizing the disposition of certain parks and recreation office records as set forth in Exhibit A, and I so move. Second. It's been moved and seconded. Um, it's records, right, Doug? Is Pro there anything program on? registration forms, uh, some personnel information, stuff like that. My old... Uh, Pool ID photo with that horrible picture. Please tell no, me that's, that's permanent. That lasts forever in the computer. That's really that's a shame. We're going to delete that whole computer. Um, any uh, questions from the committee, the board in general, uh, staff, audience? Laura Lehman, fourteen thirty-one Bryant Lane. Um, I have been working on several issues with our parks and our properties and our programs, and uh, I have submitted a right to know before this meeting to to uh, ask to be able to see those documents before they are uh, eliminated, because there is a tremendous amount of redaction on things like pool passes and so on. I've, I've asked if uh, Mr. Lefevre might work with me so that we didn't have to do that. I don't want anybody's pool passes. I don't want any of that information, but I do need to see what information is there. And then in, in great chunks, I can say, you don't need to redact anything. I don't want that. I don't want that. So um, I'm hoping we can have a collaborative process that makes it pretty easy just to get to, to drill down so that I know what's there and then I can easily say what things I'm looking for. Okay. All right. All right. Thank, thank, thank you. you. Uh, Manager Lefevre, do you have any comment or Director Wendell? I'll defer no. to the other side here. No, it shouldn't be an issue. Uh, I'll share with Ms. Lehman uh, the Exhibit A that's attached to the resolution that identifies the documents uh, that will be dis uh, discarded, and we'll work through the right to know request. Won't be a problem. All right. Thank you very much. All right, then. Uh, let's vote. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Eyes have it. And we have one additional item. It's a for discussion only item. I guess we could call it PA4. Um, and uh, I believe uh, that Commissioner Farron is going. Oh, Commissioner Farron is going to come up and take the podium and uh, tell us about a program that's been on his mind to introduce. Thank you, Commissioner Spiegelman. Commissioner Spiegelman, excuse me. This is going to be Abington Runs. Abington Runs. I'm the least Thank qualified you. person to be. Uh, listening to this so but good evening thank you all for having me and indulging me I feel fortunate to be here on a relatively easy agenda night um, I'm here just to talk about a couple ideas that have been batting around my head and I by no means claim to be an expert here but I think there's uh, an opportunity and I'm, I'm here basically tonight to prevent present these two ideas to ask for your support to ask for some guidance and, and feedback and also just to keep you informed so that instead of me going around doing this and having residents ask what it is, if it's officially sponsored, you're kind of aware of what it is and we can kind of move forward hopefully together. Uh, I've spoken to Commissioner Spiegelman a couple months back. This was dancing around in my head. Given the time of year, at the end of year with some of the budget concerns and, and the elections, we thought it made, made more sense to wait until the, 
beginning of 2016, and now we're here. Um, and so we think, uh, I think this is a good time to talk about it. And I'm calling it Abington Runs just to give you an idea of what it is. And there's two similar but somewhat um, disconnected ideas. The first is a 5K racing series. Um, I don't think I've made any secret of my affinity for 5K races over the, the past couple of years. Uh, I try to do as many of them as I can. I think they're great for the community. I think they have great goals and ideals for each one of them. Uh, and what I notice is, this is just off the top of my head. I didn't do any research. There were eight 5K runs in Abington that, just, that I know of. Right? I haven't looked into anything. I haven't asked anybody to provide me with names. And they're coming up every year. These last two, as far as I can tell, are new races this year. So 5Ks aren't going away. They continue to come around. And what I've also found out is Bucks County, for example, has a 5K racing series. So instead of every single 5K trying to get you to join their 5K, there's a collective site. One site for registration, one site for marketing. They can collaborate on their sponsors. They can collaborate on their supplies. They can work with the police and the townships uh, and the township together to figure out what they need logistics-wise. And we don't seem to have that. We have a lot of good 5K races, and I think um, Commissioner Gillespie can talk about the challenges. Uh, Lieutenant Malloy, who was there earlier, can talk about the challenges of trying to put a 5K together. And I think something like this makes it easier for, for all of our residents who are running these incredible events to, to coordinate. Um, benefits, logistics, role of the public. There's benefits for the race, race organizers. I think there's also benefits for the township. I think we come across better if we have an organized central site for people who want to run a 5K where they can go. Uh, I think at this point we might promote more running. Like if you go to the, a centralized site and you realize there are two or three more races that you want to do, you don't have to go anywhere else. You can just sign up right there and you're good to go. And so we're now increasing the health of our participants who are running in more races. We're possibly increasing the revenue for our 5K sponsors. We're bringing people into the township who might be coming in and buying snacks and, and lunches and breakfast and, and everything they would be doing on a day of a race um, more and more throughout the course of the year. Role of the public and role of the Board of Commissioners at this point, I I'm just looking for, for help. Uh, I have been very careful to not broach this with too many people because I didn't want this to snowball before I had a chance to speak with you all. But I would ask any, anybody in the public who's watching this um, or who's going to read this in my newsletter when it goes out to give me a call. Uh, I know there's a lot of running enthusiasts. The running community is very, 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 very positive and supportive about races. And I think doing something like this would gender, engender a lot of support because um, I don't pretend to be an expert. I don't pretend to be able to do this by myself. I'd be looking for, for a team of support. And I would ask for all of your support. If, as we get this rolling through, uh, anything that you could do to publicize it, the people in your wards, to, to encourage them to go forward. If somebody's thinking about doing a 5K, uh, there's a lot of work that goes into it. I think it's about six to nine months just to get one up and running. Right? I mean, you, Commissioner Gillespie, I think, finishes to keep the parade running, and the next day they're, they're ready to go. It is the fifth year, and it really is now starting to just roll. It takes <laughs> takes some time. Uh, yeah, yeah. Time and energy and effort, and we've got and great support. Lieutenant Malloy can tell you that because he thought he tried to do one. It was difficult. Right, yeah. and, and it's a challenge. So I think all of this can be helpful to everybody involved. And I think it encourages running throughout our township. And as we look into our bike lanes, and, and Commissioner Spiegelman and I were joking around about we're trying to make this a walkable slash runnable community, I think this promotes that on a variety of different levels. Uh, and then, you know, those paths that we take with so many 5Ks, maybe we, we talk about some of the, the, um, the opportunities we have for creating kind of um, different 5Ks so we don't just glut the market. I don't want to have a 5K every weekend. That kind of destroys the idea. But how do we manage it? How do we make sure that everybody's... Getting, getting what they want from it, and at the same time, our, our public is enjoying it. So the second idea, and I'll ask your indulgence to let me finish the second one before I, any questions, is more of, more of a bringing a new race into Abington. Uh, and the, the impetus behind this is the Philly 10K, if anybody's familiar with that. There are 5K races, like I said, very easy to find. There are marathons everywhere. They're very easy to find, half marathons. That middle range, though, right, that, that 6 to 9, 10 miles, isn't as easy to find, and there's a huge market for that. So there was a, um, a company in Philadelphia that started the Philadelphia 10K, and I think they sold out in five minutes. Thousands of people trying to get onto the site to, to do this. There's a, there's a real genuine interest for people who want to run more than a 5K, but maybe aren't ready for a 15K or a half marathon. Um, I think the benefits are the same. We'd be bringing people into Abington f for the first time in some cases. We'd have uh, a community-wide race. Um, so we'd be creating some kind of revenue, hopefully, for, for the neighborhood. We'd have sponsors. We'd have 
community involvement. We'd have different groups running around. We have volunteer opportunities for people who need to support the race as it's going on and as we're, we're going forward. I know in the Philly 10K they had Girl Scout troops and Boy Scout troops and different community groups and bands and every, everybody was there. And then I had a chance to go through and you, you see the city again for the first time. And I think we had that opportunity here in Abington. People might see different parts of Abington they hadn't seen before. And they might really realize, hey, this is a great little nugget. This is a, a hole in the wall that I want to go to, to to get a bite to eat. Or I want to come back here. I want to see, you know, I ran past the art center. What does that house mean? Uh, we had a meeting in, in Cheltenham the other day, Commissioner Spiegelman, Commissioner ben, uh, Sanchez and I, Manager Lefevre, and Mr. Powers. And we were talking about the architecture of the house where we wound up staying. That kind of stuff in gener you know, generates interest in what we're doing. Um, it's a little bit more difficult. I'm not going to pretend that this would be easy. Just coming here tonight and saying I want an Abington 10K doesn't mean it's going to happen. You know, there, there's a market for it, but it's a, speci a specific market, right? Maybe there's a reason it worked in Philadelphia, and it might not work in Abington. We might not have the size. We might not have the, the support structure in place. And in, in talking to some of the, just in general, not specifically about this, the Philly 10K was a Herculean effort. It, it was almost a year and a half, two years of just preparation work to get that going. Um, I don't think we'd have as many hurdles here in, in terms of logistics and bureaucracy, but again, that might take a year or two years to get that, that ball rolling to find the support, the financial level from an organizational side, and then at that point to promote it, market it, and move forward with it. And if that was something that moved forward, same role with the, the public and same role with, with um, the commissioners would just be support and, and asking questions. Um, what I'm thinking about doing, depending on how this moves along, is, is trying to come back with a couple of updates, hopefully shorter than this, uh, but a couple of updates of where we are. Is there an interest for a 5K racing series or is there not? And is there an interest for an Abington 10K or is there not really a feasible market for it here in Abington? Um, and come back to you April, May, depending on how it's going, August and, and September, October, and then maybe move from there. And I left my, my email, it's a little hard to see, I think, um, and my phone number if, if anybody is watching this and wants to reach out. And, we, and in the next you know, two, three months, maybe get together, sit down, and talk about what other ideas are out there. Has anybody else had a similar thought process, and how do we go forward to mobilize this moving forward? Um, it, it might be in April and May I come back and say, this is great. We've got 400 people trying to do this and, and help me. And it might come back and say, I, I sat alone in a coffee shop for two hours waiting for somebody to come, and nobody showed up. Um, I don't know, but I, I just kind of wanted to get the conversation started and just ask for the board's support. Thank you. Thank you very much, Commissioner Farron. Um, does anybody have any questions? Or Commissioner Klein has feedback. So the, I think the 10K idea is, is a good one. It's a fascinating one, only because there's nobody else is doing it other than in right. Philly. Right. Um, I mean, I was involved in a couple of bike rides, and I know how the logistics, how difficult the logistics are. Right. Um, the, my, my issue with the 5K is we're promoting all these various nonprofits. I, I assume they're nonprofits. Some most may of them, not, sure. Yeah, um, but some at Abington, Abington Art, the Art Center. Right, I yeah, know. Yeah, yeah. The, but my my concern is if the township gets involved in promoting them, we really don't have an ability to say no to anybody at that point that right. wants to put on a 5K. Right, and I get concerned about whether. The township should be promoting certain nonprofits, or I mean, depending on who they are, some some on the board may be fine with it, some may not be. You know, sure. it's a, depending on what the wins are, and that's the problem. That's why I think the 10K, whereas if Abington is the sponsor or the lead in that, I think it it, it has a great it has a great potential right. to promote the township. Whereas the other is, is has some concerns to me. That's all. No, and that's exactly why. I, mean, I, I like the idea. I mean, there's a lot of people. I have a lot of friends that run. I, I do not because of my I don't for various reasons, but my, mainly my knees. I can't run like that. Right. But I have a lot of friends that, that run a lot of 5Ks, and many of them are in the township, and would would love to have a central clearinghouse for right. for for figuring out how to sign up for 5K runs. So, sure. And that's exactly why I'm here is to get that kind of feedback. Yeah. It might be that somebody sees this and they do it on their own and we don't have to, I don't have to do anything else. Um, I'd have to do some more research into the Bucks County one to see how that's organized. I don't know that that's sponsored by, you know, Bucks County or if that's just right. an individual site. But that's, that's the kind of stuff I'd be looking forward but to But the 10K out. idea is, I mean, something, I, something I'd be interested in. Right. Because I, for the township to sponsor, I think would be, I don't know what the overall logistics of how we do that and how right. the township gets involved. and. Then do you get into corporate sponsors or you know people making donations? But at the same time, I think that's something that could actually showcase Abington, right? Um, and 10K, six seven miles is that what it is? 10K, six point two, 
Yeah, I mean, that's a, you can cover some ground. It's a decent run. Yeah, I mean, you mm -hmm. can cover some good areas of the township right. um, within that period, within that space. Right, and that's so, the hope. Yeah, I and mean, I think that's, a, I think the 10K idea is a, is a good idea. Great, so. thank you. Commissioner Schreiber. Um, so if the 10K, if that becomes a township sponsored, and as Commissioner Klein was just saying, well, first of all, I think it's a great idea, but I also think it's a lot of work. Sure. As you identified. And I'm wondering if this 5K should then, because I, as I was just sitting here, I thought of like two other races that I know of that's not on the list. Sure. And I'm sure other people will think of others. So there's a lot of them, like you were mm -hmm. saying. I don't know if I'm assuming they're 5K these other ones I thought of. So I'm wondering if, if all the focus or website, whatever you want to do about it, um, if that becomes the main event, so to speak, and then there's just links if you want to see other races and instead of creating a series too. Sure. You know. Yeah. Um, but I'm also wondering the point that you just brought up about donations, would there be, do I mean, well, I, I people know. pay to be in races and what would that money be going to I think would be a huge question. Right, and that would be exactly what we'd be trying to find out. I, I don't have an answer for that right now. I know there's the corporate sponsorships and then you pay to, to run the race. Uh, I, I don't know what the Philly 10K goes to. I think it's a private organization, so they might redonate it back to the running community within within the running community. So it's not actually variety. like the township or the city of Philadelphia. Who's no, it's a private, right. private race. Okay. And right. also, I mean, sure obviously that. there'd be a certain amount of money to cover uh, Cost, the overhead things like police mm -hmm. overtime for the route and whatnot. Right. Um, but I, I think all of this, this is all stuff that can, that can be worked out. I think this is a, this is a great framework. Commissioner Rothman. Uh, I'd like to work with you on the process uh, okay. as to the, the 10K. I think it's clear we have multiple hurdles that we thought of in five, ten minutes. Right. Uh, so I'm sure there's going to be a lot more. Mm -hmm. But I think the concept, uh, and I feel more comfortable with us putting our time towards the 10K idea sure. due to the same concerns I share with uh, those set forth by Commissioner Klein. But I think it's, I think it's a great way to help promote the township. And, right. you know, sometimes when you... Uh, get one of these up and running earlier before everybody else jumps on board it, it is, is a way to make it, you know, one of the mainstays in the running community because I know people are very loyal to the ones that they participate in uh, over time and sell out in a second or two, um, like the, you know, Broad Street Run, that kind of thing. So uh, I, I'd be interested in working with you on getting more ideas together. Great. Thank you. And I, I, of course, would like to uh, volunteer my services uh, designing a logo, handing out water bottles, or any other stationary, uh, totally uh, physical activity. No, you're, free you're the first component. runner. <laughs> I've got a bid made up for you. You're running first. Any other uh, questions for Commissioner Farron? Thank you Great. so much, Thank Commissioner. Thank you. Um, all right. Before we, uh, before we go to uh, general public comment on public affairs, uh, any comments from members of the committee or uh, so Commissioner real quick. So I was listening to you guys talk about Ellen Bard today. And um, last month we started the 24-hour relay meetings, which will be May 21st, 22nd this year. And I met, had lunch with Butchie Beal, who had a lot of pictures from back. And Ellen Bard was such a part of this community. And she gave so much. I mean, every year you would see pictures of her involved in the 24-hour relay. So if you ever are interested in pictures there, um, reach out to Butchie Bill. He has some great pictures of, of you know, Ellen and things that she did in the community. Uh, the other thing is we are looking for volunteers for that. Um, we are looking for people who are interested in getting involved. John has stepped up, and he's going to do a 9-11 tribute with uh, with us this year, I believe, and I, I think that's a great idea. We've done a 9-11 tribute at 9-11 for the past three or four years. But, you know, you, you see the, the kids, they weren't probably born or they were just born when that happened. So they don't know, and we are trying to find an idea of how to uh, educate them a little bit more on what happened. And Ron Griffith, who is our dog animal control, he is probably a survivor of 9-11 and his you know, so he's going to work with John, and, and I really appreciate you getting involved with us. And so if anybody else is interested in volunteering, please step up. I would love that. Thank you. Well, thank you very much, Commissioner Kalinowski. It's, a, it's an honor to be involved. 24-Hour Relay is one of the highlights of the, 
of the calendar of township life every yeah, year. It really is. And uh, I'm very, very much looking forward uh, to, uh, to being involved again. And thank you also for honoring Green Sweater Night. Um, that's really appreciated. <laughs> um, all right. We have, uniform. we have one, uh, one member of our, uh, of our public uh, signed up to speak, so we're going to call on him first. Uh, Mr. Michael Curtis. Michael Curtis, Senior, 1137 Tyson Avenue, here in Abington. Come to you again, like I did last year, about the E-Verify. We got taxes coming down. The state government, Montgomery County, which we were told weren't going to be, they're coming. We got a school board that just hit us with taxes. I guess it's to help pay for a $319,000 salary, plus benefits and stuff. We got taxes coming right here in this township. The E-Verify program, you'll hear some people say, well, that's discriminating. I couldn't agree with them more. It's discriminating against our fellow countrymen who cannot find a job or own part-time wages in order to feed their family and get things done. Under the H-1 visas, companies are hiring people from out of country, bringing them in here and undermining the American workforce and the pay scale. I know people that live here in Abington right now that are planning to move out of Abington Township at the end of this school year. I hope they don't, but that's what they told me that they were going to do. I requested last year that the E-Verify be put in written form for Abington Township for any business that wants to do business directly with Abington Township. I know you cannot tell an employer who you can and cannot hire, but can, you can sure make it in written form, black and white, for anybody who wants to look on the website, to find the document, and for those companies that they do and must verify the employees they have. I know for a fact that in this township, there are companies that hire those under the visa programs, bring them in here to work, undermining your fellow citizens. I'm asking you as a patriot, as a lover of my country, my flag that stands behind you, Please stand up for your fellow countrymen and try and put a stop to some of these con companies out here that are undermining the workforce, cutting the pay scale. I've turned away three tree services because my question to them was, do you have an all-American workforce or do you hire somebody and bring them in under a visa program? I was told by one particular tree company, what I will not mention, to go do something I can't do myself. And I'll be damned if I'm going to hire some company to do anything for me, I don't care how small it is or if it's a big one, to do something for me that does not support our fellow countrymen. So please, I'm asking you on behalf of all citizens of the United States, right here of Abington Township, put that E-Verify in written form so those inquiring can pull it up on the website or speak to you commissioners. I believe in government to a certain point, but I strongly support that E-Verify. When I see Americans don't have a job and can't make ends meet because there's no jobs because these jobs are handed out, under these programs, <coughs> majorly, majorly something wrong. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Curtis. Any other public affairs uh, related uh, comments from members of the public? Laura Lehman, 1431 Bryant Lane, and I'd like to give a thumbs up to what Mr. Curtis just said. I think for quite some time we've been asking for employers to be required to use the E-Verify program, and I'm not sure how we kind of get our government so when there's a need, they actually have to do something. So there's a need there, and there's a program that a lot of people put together that's there to solve it. So now how do we get our legislators to use that program and make sure that the businesses in Abington are doing that? Um, I, I also have a problem when people come and I ask them the question and they all tell me all the time that all their people are legal 
and like Mr. Curtis, we find out in other ways that they're not. So um, would very much appreciate that. Um, the uh, other main thing, a, a real quick thing on um, Mr. Farron's idea is wonderful. We'd love to see people out and enjoying all those things. But we do have, as, as was mentioned to some degree, we do have a problem with lots and lots and lots of nonprofits where our money goes in and our employees go in, our employee time goes in to getting all of the work done and then the profits, which there are plenty of profits involved with a, with a 10K, for instance, and many of these other events, events go to vendors and others. So when uh, programs are very successful, they often can pay for those things. Um, so th there needs to be some form of oversight for that, and that's one of the reasons that we have an $18 trillion deficit, and it's probably more like 20 at this point. I haven't been following it recently. Um, I did email all of you a, um, I, at the uh, public works meeting this week. I mentioned that um, on our website we had tried to get a page where all of the, and, and so I emailed you all an example, and it basically has the public affairs meeting, this one, and then it would say what the date is, and it would list the location, it would have the add this to my calendar, it would have the agenda, it would have the minutes, it would have the, I can't read that because it's too small, documents and the information, um, it would have the video, and it would have the status or next meeting. All of that would be in one place. Right now, when I click on the public affairs meeting, it takes to me to a place that says there's a public affairs meeting tonight, the same thing that you just told me on the front page. And no click to the agenda. You have to surf all over the site. And this is really exactly what we need. And I can't imagine. I don't know how it didn't get done that way because I sent in examples of that and asked for that to happen. So I'm hoping that, is there a chance, Mr. Spiegelman, that we could get some help getting something that simple in? I will, I have honestly not received that email yet, but I'll, I'll. I just I'll, sent it before the meeting, right, so I'll, yeah. I, I'll, I'll, certainly, I'll certainly check it out and, and I'll take a look at it and okay. see what it's all about. I mentioned it at Public Works, too, so I guess you've had a minute to think about it. Doesn't it make more sense that everything would be on one page? You could find the video of the meeting. You could find the date. You could find the documents. You could find everything in one place. As I said, I will, uh, I will check it out. You won't say yes, right? It's a good idea. I, I don't say yes to something I haven't seen. That's not very responsible. <laughs> all, right. all right. Thank you. Mr. Bell? Come, come on up to the mic. Name and address, as always, sir. Raymond Bell, 2076 Parkview Avenue. Um, Commissioner Myers, I still have your pen. I'm, I don't plan to give it back to you if that's okay. Fine. All right. And thank you for your courtesy rendered to me today as well. Um, I'm, I'm not overjoyed uh, or excited about uh, bicycle uh, places or everything that that uh, you know, we're, I heard tonight about exercising and what have you. At my age, uh, it kind of just goes away, and I'm not interested in it. But uh, anyway, uh, I think that there's a forum uh, that you know, when you're going to promote something, whether it's nonprofit or what have you, it should be uh, probably there are a lot of people that want to promote a nonprofit that could come here, right? So I'm, I'm a little, I would be cautious on promoting. Uh, an event that is nonprofit related uh, as an endorsement or couldn't, couldn't, can be dis, uh, uh, considered an endorsement. Um, the other thing, Mr. Curtis, just to let you know, um, and as a veteran as well, um, I don't even let someone plow my snow unless they're a member of this country. Uh, so, and, and I certainly share that and respect that very much. Um, anyway, uh, I had the pleasure of knowing uh, uh, Alan Bard uh, for a long time. I am a Republican, uh, and uh, 
Um, I won't tell you where my car is parked, but anyway, it was interesting. One of my uh, uh, relationships with her in 1995 is when she uh, voiced a, an opposition to the parking lot that we now have uh, in my neighborhood. Uh, I will shortly be giving to the manager uh, because I think it's important that, and I'll do this in the form of, of the uh, total commissioners, that I think you have to place a lens on past decisions, and I'm going to share that with you as to what we are seeing and going through today. Uh, last but not least, they're gone. Uh, we had a heck of a snowstorm, um, and uh, uh, I tell you, my, my wife almost threw me out of the house because, I mean, I got caged in there. But anyway, I think the township in my neighborhood uh, did a good job considering the fact of the amount of snow that we had. So I wanted to pass that on as well. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Bell. All right. Uh, with that, we shall adjourn. Thank you.